Hi, I'm Kay. I'm a speech language pathologist from Quezon City and a certified member of the Philippine Association of Speech Pathologists. So for those who are not familiar with what we do, we deal with disorders of speech and language. So though you hear those two used interchangeably, they're not exactly the same thing. Language is the entirety of communication systems like written, gestural, body language, and spoken. But speech only pertains to the production or the sounds that we use in spoken language. The kind of speech pathologist that I am, that I've realized throughout the years, is I really love the part where I give feedback to parents or caregivers because I like training the mommies, daddies, yaya, kuya, ate. I really like to equip them with the skills or some skills that they can do, especially the ones who are motivated to do follow-through activities for their kids at home. I'm putting this information out here for two reasons. One, I'm not sure when I'll be able to return to my private clinic, to my private practice physically anytime soon. And I know that the need does not decrease the second reason is there will always be people, families, for whatever reason, they don't have the means to send their children to therapy, but I would love for them to still be able to do some things to help their children at home. So I'm going to try my best to simplify some of the techniques that we that we use during therapy so that you can do them at home because the truth of the matter is we have your children for like one to two hours in a day or a week but you have them forever <laughs> 24 7 so it would be great if you had all these skills that you could use and let me know if there's anything you want to learn about and I will try my best to explain it in a way that m more people can understand. So for starters, I want to give you my top five tips for helping your children develop their language better. Number one. Make it meaningful. What does this mean? If you want to teach your child a word, for example, always remember to keep it in the context of what's happening at the moment right now. So for example, you want to teach your child the word ball, but at the moment there is no ball, so we want to try to avoid you asking them to say words that are not meaningful at the moment. There's a tendency to say, say ball, say ball, or can you repeat ball? But there is no ball. So there will be instances when the children will actually learn how to say the word ball, but then we're not sure if they've made that connection of what the concept of a ball is to what the word is that you ask them to say. So always try to make it meaningful. Some of the most meaningful things for very, very young children are always eating, drinking, mommy or help sounds or words. So those are good things to start with. You can start with teaching them the words for the actions that they want. Like if they want to drink, inom, 
they want to eat or caen or the things that they eat and drink. So you, you could start with milk, you could start with water. So try to avoid commands like say and then the word or can you repeat and then the word and then the object or the concept is not currently meaningful. Number two, always try to maintain eye contact or be at their eye level. So eye contact is one of the first signals or the first signs that you are starting your communication with another person. So it's a really good idea to maintain eye contact when you and your child are communicating with each other. It develops trust, but it also shows them that they need to keep focused when you are talking to another person. So for typically developing children, babies even, this is a lot more natural, but this is a little bit more difficult for children with disorders. So some of the tips that can help you maintain eye contact with your child is number three. That's be animated. Because learning occurs when they're paying attention to something, you want the attention to be on you. So it's on us to be the most animated we can be, especially with very, very young children. Children are so drawn to the screens. Why is that? It's because the things that they see on the screens are so entertaining, colorful, vibrant, the sounds are nice, the sounds are popping. So what you can do to really catch their attention is to be animated yourself. Your facial expressions, make it really exaggerated, big actions, big sounds, like ooh, or oh, or wow, or animal sounds, like um, ba, ba, or sound effects of things in the, the environment, like cars, like beep, beep. So these are some of the things when you're playing with them early on that will help keep their attention and it will keep their um, eye contact on object or an object that you're manipulating. And if you put it close to your face, it will help them focus on you. The moment that you start to get boring, you will lose their attention and then any attempts to teach them something will not go great. <laughs> so these are just examples of things that you can do to make yourself more animated. Number four, slow down. Always simplify your messages for your kids. Even with adults, the way our memory and our minds work is that we chunk messages and simplify them into bits that we can understand or remember easier. And that's why phone numbers are chunked together. Like instead of seven numbers all at once, you have, for example, 633-05-06, for example. So if you want them to learn one word, it's best to try speaking to them first in single meaningful words. Or you could use up to two words. For example, you want them to say, want food. So instead of saying, if you want food, you have to say, I want food. And you've already said a mouthful and they can't pick out which one of that is actually want food. So always chunk your messages, even for your pets, yes. But if you want them to learn those two specific words, a good way to do that is to simplify and chunk your messages. Last but not the least, number five is to repeat, 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 and don't tire of repeating. So studies show that typically developing children learn or pick up words when they've been repeated any number of times between 12 and 50 times. So that's a huge range, but you get the idea. So just because you've said the word, you feel like I've said the word five times, 
doesn't mean your child has already acquired or absorbed that word. So it's best to repeat. So it's actually very tiring. The only way that your children will actually learn things is with repetition of the same thing in the same meaningful context in an animated fashion in chunked simplified messages. So those are my top five tips for encouraging the development of your child's language. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that helped someone. Some of these are instinctual parental skills, and that's great. And if you find that you don't do them yet, that's okay. And that's what these tips are for and to hopefully replace some of the behaviors that you've been doing with more beneficial ones. With practice, I believe that we can all encourage our children to start communicating better and have fun and joy. Thank you.